Hey, you guys, my name is Lindsay Herker, and I am the creator of Systems for Success, the only course you'll ever need to build your profitable photography business. Welcome to this free training series. We're going to learn some truly awesome things. Simply by watching these videos, you're going to be able to begin building a financially successful and thriving photography business. No matter where you are in your business, how many clients you currently have, what your goals are, or what your background is, these videos will help you take the idea of the business that you have in your head and turn it into a reality. I'm going to show you my best tips and strategies to catapult your business to thriving and successful. By learning these strategies, you'll gain the knowledge to set up a business that has your marketing working in the background and systems in place to give you confidence in your business and also in the art of photography, give you back time to spend however you want with family, taking on more clients. We really should be shooting and editing more than we are making reels on Instagram. So I'm hoping that with the strategies I teach you, you're able to implement this. And third, you're going to make lots of money. After all, we are a business, not a charity, and we should be operating like one. I teach proven strategies that help that have helped countless photographers grow the business they've always dreamed of, and I'm excited to help you. So before we begin with the eight mistakes I see photographers commonly make, there are three re requirements that I think need to be met for you to get the most out of these videos. The first one is you should be proficient with your camera and know how to shoot in manual mode. Second, you should have a website or plan on creating one in the near future. A lot of what I teach is based off of having a website. And third, you should be in good standing with Google. All of my marketing is pretty much based on Google. So this is an important one. Okay. After reflecting on my first years of, as a photographer and after teaching many other students how to run a successful photography business, I have noticed some common mistakes that people make. And I have to admit, I have made every single one of these mistakes. And I'm going to give myself some of the examples when I talk through these mistakes. Um, so if you are making, making them, you are not alone. <laughs> Okay, so let's jump in. Eight mistakes that I see photographers make when they're building their business. The first one, and this is huge, is not defining who you are as a photographer. You need to decide who you want to serve and define your style of photography. So like, for example, my bread and butter in my photography business is families and newborns. That is the type of photography that I do most. And my style can be described in three words. It's luminous, meaning I am always light oriented. You'll see light plays a huge um, part in my photography. I like using creative light. I really, it's important for me to capture genuine emotion and I like editing and rich color. This is how I describe my photography. So, um, so defining this has helped me to easily communicate to my future clients because I know exactly who I am as a photographer and I want to attract clients that value these things and are looking for these things. So I don't want to attract a client who is looking for a light and airy photographer because I, that's just not my style. I love that style. I appreciate that, that there are other photographers out there that that is their style, but I don't describe myself as that on my website. So if you are unclear exactly what your photography style is or what type of photography you want to offer, Something to pay attention to is what feels natural and what brings you the most joy. I'm going to give an example right now. I had a student last year who I could see right off the bat, she was going to have a, an incredible business. She was very talented and had kind of that style. She wanted to do a client closet and had a very styled look to her shoots. And you could tell she put in a lot of effort and again, just very talented. And one day she texted me and she said, my realtor wants me to shoot headshots at an event. 
how much should I charge? And right off the bat, I was like, whoa, let's unpack this text. <laughs> I, the first thing I asked her is, does doing this type of photography align with your business goals? Like, is this something that you want to do? And she said, no. And so I think it's super easy at the very beginning to just say yes to everything or jump in to any type of photography because we're sort of just really wanting to build our business. We're excited to take pictures, but by saying yes to things that we are not interested in, it takes up our time and our energy and we're not passionate about it. And it takes away the time and energy we could be building the, the business we want to build. And this is a huge mistake I see at the very beginning of people's photography business. They're just saying yes to things that don't really align with our goals. So the first thing you need to do is figure out who you are as a photographer, like what you're gonna offer and what your style is. And at the beginning, you don't have to necessarily offer a ton of things. It's easy to, it's, it's easier and better to start off with what you really want to do. And then as you have a solid foundation with that, then you can add more things as time moves on. Okay. So the next, the second mistake I see is skipping the blueprint for your business. And this is such an easy one to forget to do or avoid doing. You have to think through how your business will function. And what I mean by that is developing your brand voice and the words that you will use to attract the right clients, identifying your ideal clients. This is a huge one, setting profitable pricing and defining your client experience. I think a lot of us don't do this because for two reasons. I think a lot of us start photography as a hobby and then slide it into a business. And so we're side, sort of on the cusp of both. Sometimes we're, you know, taking pictures for friends and sometimes we're charging people and kind of going in between those two areas is not healthy for building a business. Either you are in business or you are not in business. And the second reason I think that photographers make this mistake is there's no not really a barrier to entry in this business. It's not like we're having to invest in a space unless you have a studio or, you know, you don't, you could have a degree in photography, but you don't need a degree in photography. So because of these two reasons, I think people skip the part of creating your business blueprint. And the best way I can describe this is imagine going into a restaurant who did not have a set menu, did not have set pricing and you just walk in and you tell them what you want and you tell them how you want it made and you tell them how much you're willing to pay. That business would exhaust itself. <laughs> it would fail miserably. And yet so many photographers don't take the time to figure this out. And it's so important. And the cool thing is, is if we figure it out at the beginning, it's very easy to adjust as time goes on and as your business changes, but you should have a basic foundation before you jump in and start taking clients. Okay. Next. Oh, this is one of my favorite ones. Okay. Setting comfortable pricing instead of profitable pricing. This is like probably the most common mistake I make. And so much of it has to do with mindset and confidence. And there's just, there's a lot around this, but I see that most people, when they set their pricing, they look at photographers in their area and, and then they set their pricing just a little bit lower and because they're newer. And there's so many reasons why this doesn't work. It attracts the right, wrong clients. And ironically, it actually puts you in a position where you are competing with more photographers. If you set yourself at a higher price, there is not as much competition. So that, that middle price, like right around, I mean, I live in Austin, so this is going to be different for all different areas, but I, I feel like anywhere from like 300 to 500 is what a lot of photographers set their pricing at. And it's just, first of all, it's not sustainable. Second, it brings you the wrong clients. Third, uh, there's just a lot of competition in that pricing area. 
And fourth, another photographer, a bit, or a coach that I hired when I first moved to Austin and was deciding to make a better business of my photography business. I hired a business coach and I was talking through pricing with her. And she, she said that if you start your pricing lower and then you raise it a little bit, and then you raise it a little bit, each time you raise it, you, you lose clients. And so you're having to like put in just that much more effort to gain those clients or gain new clients. So it's better to just start where you want to start. But I do think it's very important to not just randomly establish your pricing. There is a formula to establishing it. And uh, you do get a calculator in the systems for success photo photography business course. And it's amazing. It takes, it, it takes into account what you want to make, how much you have to spend, which are your fixed costs, how much time you're spending with, with each client, how much time you're spending editing. And it gives you a number and it gives you the number that you need to charge for your average session to be profitable. And by discovering this number, you can clearly set your pricing by taking the emotion out of it, which is so important because I do think there's so much emotion in setting your prices as photographers. So, okay. I could talk about pricing forever, but we're going to move on to the next one. Okay. Not building a website designed to sell. So I've looked at a lot of websites and done a lot of reviews and what I notice is a people either don't have websites or B, if they do have websites, they're not thought out. Well, one of the most common mistakes I see is that people are just putting almost every picture they've taken on their website. And I think it's because they're feeling like they need to prove that they are busy or that they've taken a lot of pictures, but this is not what we want to do. Less is more. You need to curate your photos that you're showing on your website. Each photo should be put there with an intention to show something and it should be your best work. Other things about websites is they need to be super easy to navigate. They need to use your words that are attracting the clients that you want and your call to action needs to be repetitive, easy to find no matter where you are on your website. And the call to action is usually like a contact form. So again, I could go on and on about websites, but my website is my number one selling tool. People come to it and if they send me an inquiry, then most likely they're going to book. So it's so nice. It saves me a ton of time because I don't have to do the heavy lifting of selling. My website does it for me. Okay. Another really good one, lacking boundaries. Again, this is so easy to fall into when you're first starting your business, you're people pleasing and going above and beyond. Um, one of my students talked about how she, <laughs> I remember being on a group coaching call and she was talking about how that week she was going shopping for her client to get them their outfits for their photo session that she had the next weekend. And I was like, are you planning on doing that for all of your clients? Cause that seems like, a lot of work. And are you charging for that? You know, I'll give you my own example. I had a client who asked me to edit her jawline, like with liquify in Photoshop. And she sent me the photo I had taken and she had edited it. in I think it was like face tunes or something to make her jawline like sharper. And <laughs> because face tunes, like, compresses the image so much. You can't really do anything with it except show it online. Like you can't get it printed or anything like that. So she asked me to make those exact changes she had made in Photoshop. And of course I said, yes, because I was not good at saying no. And I spent five hours one night going back and forth with her about her jawline. I mean, it just makes me cringe even thinking about it. <laughs> Another example of lacking boundaries and this is a really good one because it's kind of like a sneaky one. And literally just this past weekend, I was texting with a group of photographers in Austin and people were complaining. And these are all well-established, like very busy photographers. 
they've been in the business for years, some, a lot of them much longer than me. And they were complaining about how their clients were either canceling at the last minute or rescheduling. And they were saying that this fall in particular has been horrible. And there were so many examples. I feel like just the past couple months have been, there's been a lot of examples of this within that group. And one of the photographers said, so in particular, one had was complaining that it was the night before and somebody was canceling because like their client had gum in their hair and they weren't asking for a reschedule. And another photographer responded like, oh, can you put out a, like an email to your list and see if you could resell it? And in my head, I was thinking that is like what people usually do. But by doing that, we're sort of teaching our clients. We're saying, oh, it's okay to schedule last minute. This person just did it. And I'm just going to send out this email and hope that one of you grabs it. But the reality is most people aren't going to grab it because most people need more than a night to get organized for a photo shoot. And what you've done is just said like, hey, it's okay to cancel on me. <laughs> so I do teach this in systems for success, like my communication strategy and how I'm kind of educating my clients multiple times on things like not canceling or my reschedule policy, because even if they reschedule, they've basically taken up two nights. So I've lost money if they reschedule. So setting up these boundaries through your communication is so important. And by setting up boundaries, boundaries, we're not saying no to people. We're saying yes to how we want to build our business and keeping out the stuff that doesn't serve us. So boundaries are so important. And I think that most of it is done through pre or proactive communication. And it doesn't have to be negative. Like the way I communicate through my emails and texts and things like that, it's all very positive and happy but it's done multiple times so that people are, I'm teaching them how to treat me. Okay, being afraid to invest in your business. So I am going to talk about myself for a minute because there was two major investments I made in my business. And the first was when I decided to, to invest a monthly amount of $300 for Google ads. Um, I was terrified to do this. I thought about it a lot and I wasn't sure if I was ready to have that sort of monthly commitment, but it made the biggest difference in my business. The second big investment I remember making and being nervous to see if it would work out. And it wasn't just an investment in money, but an investment in time was setting up my HoneyBook, which is my client relations software. Both of these things were scary and they definitely made me have some skin in the game, but by doing it, they both catapulted my business to the next level. And I do feel like, I mean, there's examples that are personal in my life too, that don't have to do with my business, where I feel like if I'm making a scary decision and I'm investing in myself, I'm investing in my business by having that skin in the game, I am going to make it work. So I do feel like, I think it's prudent to investigate big investments, but I do think it is important to take the leap when it is going to make a big difference. So, okay. Lacking systems for scalability. Creating scalable systems early on is so important because if you don't, you will get burned out. You will have wasted energy and you will have client dissatisfaction. It's so important to figure out how you are going to operate and what your habits are going to be within your business. And the best example I have to illustrate this is I don't like it when people text me to communicate about photography. And the reason is I think it makes it a little bit more personal and it's hard for me to communicate via text, everything I need them to see and read. So, and ironically, it's a lot of friends and family that will text. And it's like, I feel like they're kind of looking for a deal or whatever. So if anybody asks me or texts me about photography, the easiest thing for me to do 
is to send them to my website. And I say, oh, I need you to fill out the contact form on my website because it keeps records for me and it's just where I do all of my business. So if you could just go there, it would make it a lot better for me. I promise I'll get back to you quickly. And by doing this, it forces them to see me as a business, see my style and my pricing, and then make a decision. If they're just looking for like a quick photo shoot and they're texting me asking for that, then it doesn't, it doesn't serve me and it doesn't serve them. So a habit that I have or a system that I have is most like 90% of my communication is done via HoneyBook. And that way I have a record of everything I've said. Even if I have a phone call, which I don't generally do phone calls only with my branding photography, I will follow up the phone call with notes in HoneyBook that I send to them through email so that everything is written down and so that it's clear and either one of us could look it up. So this also, I wanted to talk quickly about marketing systems. So we're just going to talk about that as the next common mistake. So relying on unsustainable marketing strategies is the last mistake I wanted to talk about. And I think this is so common. I think a lot of people, I don't know if it's just because it's a thing to do or you get instant gratification from it, but relying on social media as your primary marketing strategy will burn you out so fast. And it also doesn't bring the right people. When people are on social media, they're there to connect with their friends. They're there to watch videos or relax. And if you interrupt them with your beautiful photography, they might, they might think, oh, I want to book with her, but then they'll be distracted because that's the way social media works and they'll get on, go on a different video. So relying on social media is, is not a great strategy. I think it's okay as a, like a substitute or not, not a substitute, like a secondary strategy, but it's definitely not my main strategy. My main strategy with marketing is Google which is intent-based marketing. It means I'm putting myself in front of people when they're ready to buy or ready to make a decision. They're actively looking for a family photographer and by through Google ads and really dialed in SEO, I put myself in front of them when they are looking for me. So it's a great connection and it brings me fantastic clients that value me. And so, it's, it's fun. Like it's fun to take their pictures and I feel reward. It feels rewarding and valued and it's just fantastic. Plus once I have my ad set up and my SEO dialed in, I don't really have to do a lot. I maybe check in once a quarter, but I am not having to make reels every day, which is so time consuming or keep on top of, top of the algorithm changes. I mean, just the thought of that is so overwhelming to me. If you look at my social media, you can see it's pretty pathetic. I have less than 500 posts since 2016. <laughs> and I have built a really just a thriving photography business focusing on Google. So I highly recommend it. Okay. And I just wanted to talk about a bonus tip. Okay. I see a lot of photographers wanting immediate success. And I do think it is very possible to have success quickly, but also give yourself some grace, recognize that you are building a business and it does take time. I see a lot of my students join uh, my class or my course and they join it for a certain reason. But I think that they get in and they often see like, there's other things they need to work on. And so just have an open mind about building your business that it is going to take time. And it literally is like you are building a business. So I know it seems like everyone has these overnight successes on social media, but it's just not the case. It does take time. It's taken me a long time. I do think that my strategies will help you get there much quicker, but it just takes time. Okay. I hope you found this, these tips or these common mistakes helpful, and I'm excited to see you in the next video series. Okay.